Another breakfast at, uh, on GB News viewer to speak to. We go to Sue Ashcombe Hurt, who is a member of the Conservative Party. Uh, Sue's from Sandbach, and uh, we know we know Sue because she's appeared on the programme a number of times. Last time I ta- saw you, Sue, of course, was in Manchester. Good to see you again. Hi, Eamon. Nice to see you again, too. Good. Well, what do you think about, you know, we're here today talking. It's always nice to touch base again and uh, you know your politics. Um, uh, uh, and where do you stand on what's been happening overnight? Well, first of all, I, I've never voted for Boris. I never thought he'd make a good prime minister because he is not interested in detail. <clears throat> He's only interested in, in the glamorous bits of politics. But I do get annoyed with MPs who actually putting forward, you know, we were only given two choices at at the uh, election for a a leader, and that was him and Hunt. And in my view, neither of them were fit for purpose. But I think Boris has got two big problems. One, he's got the media um, and the Remainers against him all the time. No matter what he does, however small it is, they blow it up into something humongous. And the second thing he does is he he promotes his mates. He doesn't look for the best person for the job. And that's the first thing I think every prime minister should do. I'm going to bring in Lord Moylan, uh, who's sitting beside me here together with Norman Baker, uh, with their opinions on what you're saying and to talk to you about that. Uh, Lord Moylan, you you hear uh, what Sue's having to say there. She's saying that Boris has got a problem with the media. There's perhaps a witch hunt um, to get him out of office. And he promotes his mates. Were you one of his mates? Uh, well, uh, first of all, my policy is the voters are always right, so I'm not here to argue with Sue. And the Conservatives never argue with members of the Conservative Party and activists, because they're definitely always right. Um, I think Sue makes a very good point, and I think a lot of people have spotted that, even people who are not natural, not, not Boris supporters like Sue, that <coughs> the relentlessness of the media coverage and the focus on Boris... and and the, the, the way it's become a sort of a, a game for the media is something that I think has struck home with a lot of people. And I think, the, I think that is balancing off with a lot of support, with a lot of uh, voters, um, concerns about... It, it's diminishing the concerns, it's diluting the concerns that others have expressed about the, the way in which Number 10 approaches scandals and difficulties and the stories it gets out and so on. So I think there's a lot to learn from listening to But Sue. is she right when, when Sue says... She, she no, I'm sorry, to I'm come is... back to this thing about promoting... Yeah. Promoting, sorry. Yeah. Um, but any prime minister who puts a cabinet together has to think about how to balance it across the party. And Boris set out doing that. And I think there's a, a lot of balance that he's tried to represent different groups um, and different, par- different elements of the party, yeah. perhaps almost too much, to the point that I think in some ways... Boris, Boris's sense of direction has been diluted by having okay. people from different wings of the party. This idea that he just promotes mates is not borne out by uh-huh. the evidence. Um, there are plenty of Remainers who've served in the Cabinet and as ministers, and he's balanced off lots of people, almost okay. to the point of diluting his own purpose. Um, Sue, so, mm-hmm. what, next, what next for Boris Johnson? Is he toast, do you think? I think that the rebels, I mean, in the in the Daily Mail this morning, it's saying eh, if he doesn't go himself, this is war. And that really disgusts me as a, a Conservative supporter, that this is what happens to Conservatives after they've been in office a while. They just start thinking of themselves and not the country and their own ambitions. And if anybody, uh, you know, they're all jealous of, of whoever's in the prime minister's spot. As I say, I've never approved of him, but it's wrong for MPs to decide to get rid of him when he's been voted in by a huge majority of 80 80 seats that they think they know better and they want to get rid of him. And he 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 really needs to listen to older people like uh, uh, Lord Frost and, and John Redwood, you know, so, economics so you, is the so thing. So you, you bring up um, a point that so many people have been getting in touch have said, and uh, Norman, it's not that, I mean, that's not what the parliamentary system is about, but a lot of people believe, like Sue, they voted the, the Prime Minister in, 
So therefore, they think it should be up to them to take him away and not his parliamentary colleagues. Well, I think some people voted for the Prime Minister, some people voted for the Conservative Party, uh, some people voted for their own local MP. It's not as simple as saying uh, that every single vote cast for the Conservatives was vote for Boris Johnson. But we are a parliamentary democracy. Uh, the Prime Minister is only there as long as his own party supports, and that's the same with any party, any Prime Minister at any particular time. And if he loses the support of his own party in Parliament, then a democratic system, what you have in this country, means he will be yeah. removed, and that's just how and it that's is. that's the system. Yeah, uh, the, I'd just the, say that yeah. on behalf of everybody who's uh, been in touch today to echo exactly what Sue is saying, just very briefly. Because, uh, what Norman is saying would be totally convincing, and is broadly right, but totally convincing, if they weren't trying to get elected with the basis of changing the rules so that they can have a vote that he won only a month ago. With that, we have to leave it. Um, thank you very much indeed, Sue. Lovely seeing you again. Who knows when we're going to talk again next? Keep in touch. Thank you very much indeed. I will. Bye-bye. Thank you very much indeed.